Hi guys, Mama Mita, and today I have a new loaf of bread that I've been working on, and I wanted to share that with you. It's a bacon tomato feta loaf. And before we get started on that, I want to show you how excited I am. My little granddaughter, she made this this little side for me, Mama Mita. <laughs> She loves watching my videos. <laughs> Poor child. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys. I just had a, a wild morning this morning. It seems like nothing seems to be going right this morning. I can't get my motor going. And I'm trying to find things and stuff. And I'm trying to fry up this bacon this morning to make these little bacon bits. Because I'm not buying those bacon bits. Those imitation bacon bits are so expensive. I couldn't find my spoon rest. I'm looking everywhere. Wasted 30 minutes looking for that spoon rest. And finally, I'm like, this is it. I got to find out what happened to the spoon rest. <laughs> I mean, I know once we get older, we forget things. So I called up my husband at work, face, FaceTimed him. And I said, because, you know, because I can't hear on the phone. And so so FaceTime, I can read his lips. And I'm like, where is my Puerto Rican spoon rest? And he goes, oops, I broke it. I dropped it, broke it. I said, okay, I'm going to forgive you for that one. But when you go to visit mom, you have to bring me two of them. One is a spare in case you drop it again. He's so hyper. <laughs> okay, guys. Oh, but, oh, I got a little tip for you, too. When you're frying up, like, hamburger meat and stuff, this potato masher works really great for breaking up hamburger meat. This one I use it for the bacon, too, just to test it. Yeah, that's pretty good for the bacon, too. <laughs> okay, let's get started on this. So the first thing you want to do on this recipe is you want to add a, a, a half a cup of water and then a, a cup of milk. So... <laughs> Oh my goodness. <laughs> anyway, let me, let me see if I can put this camera up here without <laughs> making another disaster. All right. So we've added that. And then we're going to use um, a fourth of a cup of tomato presto. And so what I did, instead of buying that little plastic uh, package, that you find that's kind of oily inside and it's got the, the longer uh, pieces of uh, tomato in it. I didn't do that and it was expensive too. So I decided to get this. I found this stuff to be a little bit more reasonable price. And now it does have uh, nuts and it. it has cashew. It doesn't have pine nuts, but it has cashews and it also has some cheese in it. But it's also got olive oil. So I'm not going to be putting olive oil. I'm not going to be adding oil, olive oil to this. I'm just going to rely on the oil that's in the bottom of that. Because I think that, and plus, you know, the bacon's got a little bit of oil also. So I'm going to add this. That's a fourth of a cup of that stuff. You could actually use maybe a little bit less if you want to. You know, but I like this stuff. I bought it yesterday. And so last night when I was having dinner, I got into it. <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, but we love our food. I'm from the deep south, and we, we like to eat. <laughs> My husband likes to eat, too, but he doesn't eat the same things I like. <laughs> Anyway, okay, so we got that in, and then you're going to go with a third of a cup, and you can maybe use a little less if you don't, if you're not like really into feta. I like feta, and feta I think is great. So I'm going to add a third of a cup of feta to that, okay, and then um, a half of, um, I would say, well, not half, like probably like a fourth of a cup, maybe a little less, of baking bits. Hmm, I might have to get that knife back out. Can't find my spoon rest to rest anything on, you know. So now that I've got that drama. Okay, so then you, um, you add the baking bits. And then after the baking bits, then you're going to go with four cups of bread flour and i like to use bread flour more than uh, all purpose you can use all purpose but i find that the texture of the bread i like the texture of the bread with bread flour so you're going to add the four 
cups of flour, bread flour. Okay. And then um, you're going to have a one and a half tablespoons of sugar and then one teaspoon of yeast. But before you do that, go ahead and throw in the two teaspoons of basil. I'm going to put those over here on the side. Then I'm going to add, I'm going to do a little hoe in this thing here, like a little well. I feel like I'm in a hoe this morning. <laughs> okay, so there you go. And that's all you have to do. Then come over here, put the bread machine on. Oh, at least it's clicking on there good. Okay, so you're going to dial this up. Okay, you're going to put that in. This is a, a two-pound loaf. Okay, so that's snapped in. And then you're going to go to the basic. You're going to select a basic, which is number one on my machine. Then I want a light crust, and then I'm going to start that up. Huh, it's going better than me. <laughs> okay, and you remember that um, because it's being an older machine that I like to uh, work that flour to the center of the pan. Now, if you find that the, it's struggling, you could add a little bit of warm water, like a tablespoon to a tablis uh, to two tablespoons. You would add as you think you need. You guys, after you watch all these videos of this, uh, making these breads, you're going to be a pro at this. <laughs> and you know, and if you don't have the bread machine, you can still do this uh, recipe. You would just mix it by hand, and then you would make, uh, let it rise uh, two times. Well, you let it rise and you punch it down, then you would let it rise and you punch it back down. Then once it started to rise again, that um, I think it's 50, like 50 minutes rise, then you would, after it rises up, then you would uh, bake it for 60 minutes. Okay, and that seems like it's doing pretty good there with mixing it up. I might, I might have to add a little bit of, uh, of water to this because... Um, it seems like it might be a little bit. Let me see if I can get that camera over here. Seems like it might be a little dry. Do you see how that's doing that? And when it's turning, it's moving it around like that. You're going to be moving it to a side. Get this off the side of the wall. Because if you don't, what will happen is it'll just bake the flour. <laughs> and it, I mean, like, it's still eatable bread, but, you know, it doesn't look the the best. Okay. And see, and you've been watching these videos, or you've been watching these videos, enough, you're smart enough now, and you're skilled enough and experienced enough now to know that you watch this bread, and if it looks like it's a little bit dry when it's mixed up here, then you would add a little bit of water, warm water to it. If it looks like it's a little too wet, like it's kind of like, uh, uh, how would you say, like too moist around it, then you would add a little bit of flour, like maybe a tablespoon of flour, because you wouldn't want it to be watery, like a batter. You don't want it to be a batter. See how that goes? Yeah. And then, so what I do is I work it to the center. I mean, maybe a newer machine might uh, make mix this up better, but this thing's like 22 years old. But hey, it works great. I mean, and, and I don't have to get in there and, and work this dough and stuff because I've got arthritis. And so for me, this is a, a blessing to have this little machine. And I'm not even worried about it. if it breaks down. I probably could fix it because it's so simple. And if, you know, if the pan wore down and stuff like that, I just go down to the Goodwill and, and keep or keep my eyes open at the Goodwill for a new one coming out, another used one. I'm not going out and paying no 100 something dollars for a, a bread machine when this one here was less than uh, $15 and I've been using it a really long time. You know, you want to save money nowadays, not lose it. 
<laughs> but this is fresh bread that you're making here. You're not getting store-bought stuff that's got um, preservatives in it that you don't know how long it's been sitting there. You're not buying, you know, um, something that's maybe been frozen and brought back out. This is really nice bread. Okay. All right. So it looks like it's doing pretty good. So we will see you back here when this is finished. Okay. We are back. And I believe we have got a bread. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I'm so excited about this one. This one smells really good. Mm. So now let's take a look at that. Can you see that? Wow. Let's open it up and see. Beautiful, beautiful. Mm. <laughs> okay, let me put this uh, camera over here, position it up here, and let's pull it out and see how it came out. All right. Woo! It's kind of hot, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. And let's see how this is going to come out now. Oh, not bad. Not bad. <laughs> wow, that's a beautiful loaf there. Woo! Woo, it's hot. <laughs> okay. Look at that. That's just absolutely beautiful. <laughs> okay. Let's try it. Let's see how. I'm not going to cut the whole loaf. Uh, because remember what I said about leaving it for like 15 minutes so it kind of cools down a little bit because it cuts better when it's cooler. I'm just going to take one slice and then uh, this is a gift. I'm taking it to, uh, to a family. And so, oh, I'm excited about this. Oh. <laughs> okay. Let's see. And remember the first piece. Oh, boy. My husband's going to be sad. He's missing out on that one. If you put too much pressure, then it kind of caves in when it's hot like that. So that's why it's best if you can, like, let it cool down some. So let's take a look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Mmm. Sure smells good. Now, this one is for the bacon tomato with feta. Wow. What a nice bread. What a nice bread. So, remember when I did the bacon, so I forgot to tell you guys, I mentioned to this, to you guys about this now, is I take like a little container and my bacon grease, once I cook the bacon up, I put the bacon grease in it and I put it in my refrigerator and I use that bacon grease for like, um, maybe for soups or uh, other foods, other dishes that I'm cooking. Today I'm making a little small crock pot of some black beans and I put a little bit of bacon in that with some green onions from the garden and those smell good too <laughs> oh boy I'm never gonna lose any weight with all this food around anyway look at this beautiful absolutely beautiful so let's see how that tastes crunchy on the outside. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I like it. You can sure smell the bacon. Mm. Yeah. The color's pretty too from that uh, from the tomato presto. That's really pretty. Mm. Forgot to turn that off. Remember also if you wanted to do another loaf you have to wait till your machine cools down some for it to, um, to do that. And you always want to make sure, you know, you keep your machine, you know, wiped off and clean like that. Um, it just, you know, I mean, it's an old machine, but it's good to keep things clean like that. Sometimes when, you, you know, the dust gets in here, so you want to like periodically like just go, go over here and wipe it out when it's cool, not when it's hot. You guys, this is just a beautiful loaf of bread. You know, and we know what's in this bread. 
when you buy bread, you know, at the stores and stuff, you don't know what uh, what all is really in there and how long it's been there and all. And with this here, you know, you know what you're putting in it. Um, and it's not that $4 loaf of bread that's a specialty bread, you know. Well, yours is specialty too, you know. But why should we have to pay $4 for a loaf of bread? That just seems like that's too much. You know, and, and nowadays family cannot afford a $4 loaf of bread. This is a nice bread and, you know, it's just, it's nice. It's really nice to be able to make your own bread for your family. You guys, I want to tell you, thank you so much for watching my video today. And please remember, if you like my video, to give me a thumbs up. You know, I appreciate it. You guys have a good time now. Bye now.